Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. This is Think Design Stories. In this series, we will be going behind the scenes on one of the most iconic laptop brands ever conceived and is still going strong. Today I am joined by David Hill, who started with IBM in 1985 and was with them until May 2005 when the IBM ThinkPad division was purchased by Lenovo. Since then, David has held several positions between those two companies, including the Executive Director of Design, the Vice President of Corporate Identity and Design, and the Chief Design Officer and Vice President of Experience Design. When it comes to ThinkPads, there are few people that know more than he does. The red track point in the center of a ThinkPad is easily the most recognizable and iconic feature. So commanding is its presence, it is found within the logo itself dotting the eye. While there is a considerable amount of fascinating technology within the track point itself, the truly recognizable and show-stealing element is the track point cap. Today, David Hill and I explore some of the stories surrounding its development of this iconic and memorable feature. The original ThinkPad, uh, the cap, was a smooth rubber. Uh, it had a slightly, slightly dome-shaped cylinder and uh, smooth rubber. It, they had a lot of wear problems, uh, and it was, uh, had poor traction. So there was a, uh, an effort that was put in to create a cap that had better wear characteristics and more traction, and that's the one that a lot of people call the cap tongue. Uh, when I first started working on ThinkPad, the, the change to a cat top had already been made. And, you know, that was that was it. And my feeling about the cat tongue was it had great traction, uh, but it I felt like it was not the most comfortable thing in the world. And that it also collected a lot of dirt and goo because it's a little bit like sandpaper. Uh, it's, it's rough. And I, I thought... Okay, I get it. I understand why the smooth rubber one didn't work because it's too smooth and the rubber is too soft and it wore out. But this cat tongue thing, you know, I'm not convinced it's the the end all beat all, and you know, there's there's no way to improve on it. So I uh, I initiated a, an effort to try to improve the track point cap, and I my feeling was that we should have no sacred cows. Uh, and in fact, we even made a design which looked a little bit like a bicycle seat. And I think it's a patent on it. Yep. And, uh, but we experimented with different shapes and, and such. And one of the things that I wanted to do was try to be a little bit bigger, uh, bigger in diameter. And of course, there was a lot of naysayers. Oh, you're going to make it so you can't type on it. <laughs> People are going to be typing and when they're trying to move the cursor and okay well this is just experimentation where you know i'm just telling you i want to do this because we spent a lot of time with purposeful evolution you know tweaking everything you can possibly imagine and i don't think there should be a force field around the track point cap that says we can't oh no no don't don't touch that you know but in reality it's it's a little bit like saying you know Whatever you do, don't touch the design of the steering wheel in next year's Porsche 911. Like, oh, it's actually the, one of the most important things you touch in the car. <laughs> you your hands on all the time. So I told the general manager, uh, Fran O'Sullivan at the time, that I was going to do this. And uh, I had a presentation, I believe, and showed her some of the things we were thinking about, like making it larger. And, you know, could we uh, in, have invent other ways to create traction that weren't as uncomfortable as such. And she was, she was kind of skeptical. And she said, well, I'm not going to stop you, but I'm just, just going to warn you. Um, I'm going to have to be convinced. Okay. So we started working on this pretty heavily and doing user research uh, with, with, you know, test subjects and, and, 
verifying things like typing errors and, and uh, just overall feel and accuracy. We had a, there was a whole accuracy test where you would use the track point and you would move the cursor through a, a um, like a maze. And the software that was written, you could detect errors, and accuracy of being able to like move down this path without bumping the edges. There was a lot of very sophisticated uh, testing tools that we developed to do that. And we started to kind of get somewhere and I had a few favorites that were starting to pop up. And uh, so we had, we had invested money in tooling, soft tooling, so we could create prototypes. And so I had this idea, I said, well, okay, the number one person I'm probably gonna have to convince is the general manager. So I went to her office and I said, Fran, I've got something I'd like you to do. I'd like you to try this track point cap. And so I you know, had it in my hand. And she said, what do you mean? I said, I want you to use it for a week. Just, you got to promise me you will use this thing for a week. I'll put it on your computer right now. And then you tell me what you think about it. Yeah, I, I don't want to do this in a meeting where you just look at it. You touch it for three seconds and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I want to, it's got to be long-term. So I'm thinking a week. She's all right, I'm in. So I pulled it off and I put the thing on there. And I think it was like, like about a day later, she calls me on the phone and she said, I just got to tell you, you can't have that thing back. I said, really? She said, no, it's great. I said, well, just keep using it for a week. We've got some questions we want to ask you. So she used it for another week. And we asked a whole bunch of questions. I took it off and then I put another one on there. <laughs> a different one. Because we had, we had about uh, three of them, I think, at the time. And she was like, okay, I, I'm in. <laughs> so she's like the only person, you know, in the, in the company who was actually using one of these other than myself and a few people on my team were long-term testing them. And I think about another day or day and a half went by and she pings me again. She said, yeah, this one's kind of good too. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> well, just keep use of it. And so she, she was like, I think you're onto something. I said, well, I so do I. And uh, eventually what we discovered from this, because of the quest was to create the perfect track point cap. That was the goal. You know, could we, could we make one that has precision um, doesn't interfere with typing, feels comfortable, doesn't wear out. Could we hit all those, all those things? <clears throat> and what we learned from that was there actually was no such thing as the perfect track point cap. It depended on what you wanted to do with it and how you used your computer. So like if you're a person who whatever your whatever your job is or however you use computer, if you need like a lot of super precision. You know, where you're infinitely moving little little things or cursors. The uh, cat tongue is actually pretty good for it because it has very, very strong traction because it's rough. <laughs> it's like sandpaper. So you, you have this very, very strong sense of control. If you're a person who does a lot of windowing, uh, maybe in a spreadsheet or scrolling through a document, you know, like this, the one which we called the uh, the golf tee, which the official name I think was soft rim. It looks like a golf tee. That's the one for you because you have some additional mechanical advantage. Your your fingers sort of cupped in this uh, this this uh, this recess and has a little bit of an edge, and it really is excellent for like moving around. And if you're a little bit in between, like, you, you, well, I want to do some precision kind of stuff, but I also do a lot of windowing. Then the soft dome, which is has a dome shape and has all little bumps on it, that thing is, that's what you want. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, are you a, a track star or a long distance runner or a little bit of both? Uh, and, uh, you know, a sprinter or a long distance runner or somebody in the middle. And so after we presented all this data, we tried to make a case for including 
all three of these caps with everything fit. <clears throat> so the when you bought a ThinkPad um, prior to this work, you got the two cat tongue uh, caps. You got the cat tongue that came on it, and you got a spare. Well, the cat tongue was expensive, and the soft dome and the soft rim were cheaper. So it actually worked out that we could put three in the box for the price of two. So everything bag came with three. And then the decision became, well, which one do we put on? And there were a lot of people said, who said, well, the cat tongue, because that's what people are used to. <clears throat> and I, my view was, well, if we do that, no one will ever know we changed it. Because they'll be in that itty bitty little bag that's <laughs> stapled shut on the bottom of the box, maybe stuck to the back of some legal warning about don't eat the battery. You know, so <laughs> it's like, come on, really? We, we can't do that. So my feeling was based on our research that the one to put on was the, the soft dome because it had a little bit of both. You know, it, it felt better. It had precision and you had more mechanical advantage. Let's use that one. And by the way, this larger diameter had zero impact on typing. Zero. There's <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. So that's what we did. We, we launched the, and I don't remember what year this was, but we launched it. Um, and it was a big deal. It got a lot of attention in the media because there was something to talk about. And it was something that people related to. You know, you, you could you could tell a story about having you know another fifteen minutes of battery life and stuff like that, and people just kind of look at you funny. But you know, you talk about and we redesigned the cap of the trap. What you did? What <laughs> that thing? And people wanted to touch it. You know, it was it was kind of fun. I think now it only comes with one cap, and it is yeah. the soft. When we, when we did the uh, ThinkPad 25, the retro ThinkPad, it came with all three. And they had to be retooled because the cap themselves is slowly getting thinner and thinner and thinner because the uh, track point started to become the long pole of the tent and was uh, uh, affecting the, uh, the thickness of the product. But I think it's okay. It uh, doesn't bother me, but... The only thing that bothers me is you, you can't swap these caps around anymore. You gotta, you gotta know well which cap do I need? I need that really, really thin one. I mean, some of them are very, very thin. Yeah, I used I, to have. I don't think there's one thinner yeah. than that. No, I, I think that's it. I think that's the thinnest. But I used to have in the design studio a glass, uh, a glass serving dish, beautiful little dish, and it has three compartments, and in it we had a big, huge handful of each one of those caps. And they dig around and say, can I have one of these? Sure. And people would swap them out immediately on uh, on their computer. So it was like a little party favor. Like it, it's, it really is kind of the, the ultimate part of the ThinkPad legacy because you, you go back to the beginning and you go to today and it is definitively there. It is definitively a track point and it is oh. red. It's beautiful. Oh. It's a it's a big deal, and and, um, and I, I'm I am proud that we we did tackle it because I think we made it better. Uh, I think it looks better, it works better, it feels better, and and we did it. And I think it's it's the result of very very extensive testing. I think all said, I think we worked on the design of the cap for over a year. Wow. As a, a skunk works project. Because you never could do it to align specifically with the launch of something like, oh, we gotta have this done by you know Thursday. Oh no, 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 no. We're, we're not gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna ruin this thing if we're not careful. We'll never hear the end of it and such. So um, we took our time, but I think it, it ended up in a really good place. And uh, you know, we did abandon the bicycle seat. The bicycle seat had some uh, interesting properties because it, you had a lot of mechanical advantage. 
And it, it sort of took the shape of the keys to surround them, the G, H, and B key. And we were experimenting with making it black with a red dot in the center. So it was like a double shot mold kind of part. I didn't, I didn't want to make a thing that wasn't round. It seemed like we're really monkeying with the secret sauce here. But we eventually abandoned it because the advantage that it had was fairly small and there was some slight risk with typing. Uh, so we eventually said, let's just patent the thing and move on. So we, we, we uh, filed for patents. That was the end of that. I don't think anybody, has, I don't think anybody has one. If we do, it'll be a major collector's item. Yeah, and like how you mentioned how it like fit around the keys, I could definitely see because I, I remember seeing the patent drawing and yeah. the, the keys were, they seemed closer to that bicycle seat shape. So I could definitely yeah. see how um, a typing error could occur or something like that. But one of the major things that I was trying to do by suggesting this bicycle seat, because I, I think I made the first sketch of it, was really, if nothing else, just to challenge my team to think outside the box. Uh, I, I just, I felt like, you know, if we go in there with our hands tied and say, well, it's gotta be round, it's gotta be red, it's gotta be rough, you know, the meeting's over. Yeah. So let's not, yeah. let's, let's not discount anything. You know, if, if we think that there's a, a, another idea, let's figure it out. So, you know, sometimes you have to, challenge people by doing that kind of thing. And you never know what comes out of it. But constraints, constraints are important to creating a design because without constraints, it's almost like you can do anything. But again, too many constraints and then you, you hamper creativity. And the color is <laughs> another kind of funny story. There used to be a guy, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say his name, but. He was possessed the the way to increase the uh, the uh, the market share of ThinkPad was to change the color of the track point. And I said, "What for? What do you, I don't understand." He said, "Well, it's so it's so red. You know, does everybody like red?" <laughs> and I was like looking at him like this is a very surrealistic conversation. And uh, and he started going through this whole scenario of you know maybe maybe we should think about that and I was very against it and, and I looked at him I said I'm sorry I just don't really understand what you mean he said well you know like lighten it maybe we should just lighten it I said you mean like pink <laughs> because you take red and you lighten it it's pink and I said well you know we could change the name to pink pad. <laughs> He just looked at me kind of funny. I said, I'm not doing this. And that was the end of that. He was my boss for a while. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Fortunately, that didn't last long. Pink pad. It could have been pink. Can you imagine? I I, I can. Um, I remember reading an, <laughs> an anecdote. I think it's in ThinkPad, a different shade of blue, where, and I think this was Richard Sapper's doing, if I'm remembering the story correctly, but there was concerns in some European countries about the track point actually being red. Yeah, and product safety. IBM product safety. Yeah. And uh, so he called it magenta. And then yes. every iteration made it slightly more red until, you know, apparently yeah. this is magenta and not red. That's right. He, um, IBM had a, a functional color coding standard that, you know, every, every control had to have a functional color code, like a green button meant something specifically or a white button or red. Red was solely reserved for the emergency power off switch which really originally came from the, uh, the uh, computer room that was full of mainframes. So like if there was some major issue, there would always be like a big red button like this. You go and slap it on the wall and it would shut down the power in the entire room. 
that was called the emergency power off or the EPO switch. And then and as computers became smaller and not necessarily, it wasn't a, in a you know, computer room, they weren't mainframes. The product safety required to have an emergency power off switch on these like mini computers and such. So they had a little bat switch that moved as if the first PC had one on the side. Uh, and that was, that was reserved for red. You know, it, had, it, it could only, only be used for the emergency power off. So Richard wanted to make the track point red to call attention to it and, and have this punctuation of life in the middle of this field of black. And, and it's not unlike his Tizio lamp with little red details and things. And he ran into the, he ran into the um, spinning turbines of IBM product safety, which had a lot of power. Uh, because you know they could they could veto all kinds of things based on potential uh, you know personal injuries or people getting electrocuted you know, stuff like this you know international standards and, and all this and so they they they, uh, they came out and said it couldn't be done it red is reserved for mercy power off switch and of course Richard couldn't believe it and he was like who are these product safety people. <laughs> Do we need to pay attention to them? Well, actually, you kind of do. Uh, and so anyway, so he, he came up with this seemingly harebrained scheme where we would just change the color of it to uh, magenta. So they had an actual uh, IBM color chip made. These were little square chips with a little handle on them, and they came in a little special envelope, and they had a date code and all this. So they made an IBM Magenta, you know, XO43B or whatever it was. I, I wish I had one of these chips. It'd be hilarious. And uh, and so that was put into the official color standards and all of this. And, and then they changed the specification for ThinkPads to be this magenta color. And then the product safety people said, oh, okay. And they signed off on it. And, uh, you know, because it was it was no longer red. In fact, the red that Richard wanted was the exact same red as the EPO switch. So it's like a double indemnity. Uh, so, you know, everything was all, all okay because now this, this track point was magenta. And then uh, each successive iteration of manipulation of the, uh, as the, it went through development, the color was slowly changed. Uh, on the fly without any official documentation until it was read. And uh, I think somebody from product safety looked at it and said, I thought this thing was magenta. And somebody said, it is, it's color, you know, XO43B, look it up in your book. Oh yeah, it's magenta. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it was over. It was, it was a genius move, I think, on this part. Don't, don't believe your eyes, it's, that's magenta. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.